Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were central figures in what remains one of the most controversial espionage cases in American history. Their trial and subsequent execution in 1953 for passing atomic secrets to the Soviet Union remains a subject of intense debate and intrigue. In hindsight, how the whole saga played out feels as if it were almost inevitable. The tenuous wartime alliance between the Allies and the Soviet Union quickly dissolved after the defeat of their common enemy, the Nazis. Two new world superpowers emerged, with conflicting ideologies and competing interests. In the USA, the threats of Soviet aggression and the spread of communism fueled a societal climate of fear and anti-communist sentiment known as the Red Scare. It was against this backdrop and amid global controversy at New York's Sing Sing prison on the 19th of June 1953 that married couple Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were put to death by electric chair. They were the first and only American citizens to be executed for crimes of espionage during peacetime. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg's journey from ordinary citizens to infamous spies began in the 1930s. Born to poor immigrant families in New York City, they became involved in left-wing politics during the Great Depression. Julius, an electrical engineer, and Ethel, an aspiring singer and actress who gave up her dreams to become a housewife, were committed to communist ideology. Julius joined the Young Communist League in 1936, where he met Ethel. By 1942, they had joined the American Communist Party. Julius's technical expertise led him to the Army Signal Corps, where he worked on radar and communications equipment. Through his ties with the American Communist Party, Julius was recruited by Moscow and began passing on information through a network of Soviet contacts. His task was to collect information on the US Army's research and development of multiple weapon systems, including the atom bomb as part of the Manhattan Project. He provided the Soviets with details about nuclear weapon designs, including components and mechanisms essential to atomic bomb construction. This ultimately aided the Soviet Union in advancing their nuclear capabilities. For eight years, the Rosenbergs delivered secrets to the Soviets, until one day in 1950 when Klaus Fuchs was arrested. Fuchs was a German-born physicist turned spy who worked on the British and American atomic bomb projects during World War II. Like Julius, he passed atomic secrets to the Soviet Union. Fuchs's confession revealed a network of espionage that included Harry Gold, an American lab chemist and NKVD courier who in turn identified David Greenglass. Greenglass just so happened to be Ethel Rosenberg's brother. Greenglass's testimony eventually implicated the Rosenbergs. As such, Julius was arrested in July 1950, followed by Ethel in August. Having turned state witness, David Greenglass testified at the Rosenberg trial that he had provided atomic information to Julius and that Ethel had typed his notes before the intelligence was passed on to the Soviets. Greenglass's testimony proved critical, with the Rosenbergs swiftly being convicted and sentenced to death. Despite numerous appeals, a public outcry and campaigning, US President Dwight D. Eisenhower was in no mood to grant clemency. What was particularly sad was that the Rosenbergs left behind two young children. The orphaned brothers Michael and Robert were passed around several foster homes before being adopted. As adults, the brothers have written about their lives and loss and have campaigned against those targeted for political activism. While by no means defending their actions, the sentencing was no doubt influenced by the political climate of the time. In later years, declassified Soviet documents confirmed Julius Rosenberg's involvement in espionage, but Ethel's role remains ambiguous. Greenglass later admitted that parts of his story told at the trial were fabricated. By all indications, the case against Ethel was much weaker compared to Julius, with many believing that she was prosecuted more as a pressure tactic against Julius rather than for substantial espionage activities of her own. And so it was that the Rosenberg affair set the tone for Cold War espionage for the next five decades in America, 
and was the very first birth pang of what became known as the Golden Age of Espionage.